friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Heffy Doodles, Hot Diggity Dog, and Who Let the Dogs Out. So I've stamped my images out in Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink on some Nina Solar White cardstock, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with my dog, and for him I'm using E50, E51, and E53. So I'm taking that E53 and laying in some shadows all over his body wherever I felt like they should go. And then I'm going to take the E51 and begin to blend those out. I wanted him to stay pretty light, so I'm keeping those shadow areas pretty minimal and saving the majority of his body for that lightest shade, the E50. So I'm going to fill in all the white space that remains just with a thin coat of that E50 so he stays nice and light but everything looks nice and softly blended. I'm also going to color in the bone that's sticking out of the dog bowl and the one that's over the top of the uh, dog house with these three shades. And then I'm going to move on to E55, E57, and E59. I'm going to use those to color in his ears, starting with the E59 down on the bottom edge and blending up with the E57 and then filling in that last little sliver with the E55. And I will also use those shades to color in the dog food in the bowl, starting with the darkest and just blending towards the top with the lighter shades. For the flower pots, I'm using B21, B23, and B26. I'm going to use that B26 to lay my shadows. And this one I'm going to do a little bit differently than the other because it is laying down. So the shadows would be toward the bottom, but still there would be a shadow cast by that top lip onto the lower portion. So I laid in that B26 first and then blended up with the B23 and then I'm going to fill in with the B21. And then for the one that's still standing, I'm going to do more of a central light source. So I'm going to pull my shadows in from both sides and also put a shadow under that lip. And then I'm going to blend toward the center. So I'll pull that B23 in next and I'm going to save a nice highlighted area in the middle for that B21. That's going to help it look nice and round. It's gonna kind of pull it off the page a bit and kind of just make it look a little more three-dimensional. I did go in with a second layer just to intensify that color because um, I thought that it was not really blended very well um, and I do this a lot. I just think it really, really helps to uh, soften those edges and also just beef up the saturation on things. So I'm moving on to the dirt that is spilling out of the bottom flower pot and I wanted to use a different brown than what I used on the dogs. So I used E44, E47, and E49. So again I laid some shadow down with the E49 and I did that for the dirt in the flower pot above as well and then blended toward the top with the E47 and then used the E44 at the very top where the light would be hitting it the most. And then rather than introducing any black I'm going to use these colors for the dog's nose as well. For the flower stems and leaves, I'm using YG63 and YG67. Just using these two shades for that since it's such a small area. So I laid in a little shadow with the YG67 and then blended that out quickly with the YG63. And then for the flowers, I thought they looked like peonies, which I absolutely love. So I'm using RV10, RV11, and RV13. So I'm using the RV13 to kind of outline the swirls and just draw attention to, you know, the lines that the artist has already drawn there. And then I'm going to softly blend over that with the RV11, just using the very tip of my marker so I can get, you know, thin little lines so that I can get enough room to have all three of those shades. So I'll just fill in the rest with that RV10. 
I'm moving on to BG10, BG11, and BG13, and I'm going to use these shades to color in the dog bowl. And I'm coloring this in much the same way as I did the standing flower pot, since it is also a round object. So just putting that darker uh, color on the outside edge and blending toward the center. And I did do a double layer on that as well. And then I'm also going to use these shades to color in the water that is spurting out of the hose. And I'm coloring this in much the same style as I did the flowers, just minus the swirl in the center. Just kind of outlining a few of those curved areas on the outside edge with that BG13 and then blending toward the center with the BG11 and then filling in any white space with that BG10. I'll do the tennis ball with YG00, YG01, and YG03. This is like the perfect chartreuse tennis ball shade. And then I'm moving on to the Frisbee and I'm going to use Y11, Y13, and Y15. So I'm putting a shadow down in the recessed area in the center and then also along the outside edge with that Y15 and then blending out with the Y13 and then the Y11. And I'm also going to do the nozzle on the hose with these three shades. And then it wasn't quite the right color, so I did add in a little Y26 just to kind of give it a bit of a more golden tone. And blended back out with the Y13. I'm moving on to the hose, and I'm using G14, G16, and G19 for this. So I'm going on the inside edge and then um, I'm going to skip around and kind of add the shadow wherever I think it looks the most natural. I want to keep the highlight on the part that's kind of curved toward the top, if that makes sense, where the sun would be hitting it the most. So I use the G19 for that and then I'm blending that out with the G16. And then I'll fill in the rest with the G14. And I thought this was just like the perfect plasticky, you know, hose green. Um, it just kind of looks exactly like my garden hose. So I thought this combo worked really well. The next combo that I'm using is my favorite red combo. This is R29, R39, and R59. And I'm going to be coloring the dog's collar. And then I'm also going to do the doghouse red. So I use that R59 as my shadowed color. I put that back behind his neck. And then I'm also going to outline each of the boards of the doghouse with this shade. I'm going to add a little shadow coming down from the top where the roof would be casting a shadow. And then I'm also going to put a little shadow down at the bottom where the grass would be casting a shadow. So I'm doing all of that with the R59 first, and then I will bring in the R39 and begin to pull that color towards the center of each of those boards, just softening the edge of that R59 and, you know, creating a nice transition. Now, if it isn't perfect, don't worry. This is supposed to be wood, so it's okay if it has some texture. Um, but then I'm just going to fill in all the rest with that R29. And you can see why I love this combo so much. It's just so gorgeous. It practically glows. And again, I decided not to add any black onto this card. So I'm going to go back to the combo that I use for the dirt, which is E44, E47, and E49. That E49 is pretty much the darkest brown that I own so it's the closest thing to black but it's still going to just have that little bit of difference. So I laid a little bit of that on the underside of each of the shingles and then a little bit on the front piece and then I actually only use the E47 to blend all of that out on the roof. And then for the inside, I'm going to take away the E49 and add in the E43 to create some dark shadows inside that doghouse. 
So I started with that E47 in the bottom right corner and did kind of a triangular shape and I'm going up towards the top left with that E44 and then filling in with the E43. And then I'll trim all of these images out with their matching dies. So now I'm going to create a couple of pieces to put together for my focal panel. And I'm going to be using these new blending brushes from Pink and Main. Actually, the small size here is the new one and the larger size was already available, but they are really soft and they come in this great little case. And full disclosure, Pink and Main did contact me and ask if they could send me these brushes to review. So I'm going to see how I like them today and give you my honest opinion. So I'm starting with the larger brush and I'm going to blend on some Bundled Sage Distress Oxide ink. And I chose to use the larger brush for this because I'm going to cover the entire surface of this panel, which is a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. So I did about half of it and then I'm going to turn the panel around to just make it a little bit more comfortable to continue blending. And I have to say, I really like how soft this brush was able to um, kind of blend on that color. It was really, really smooth and easy to use. So then I'm going to take some Mowed Lawn Distress Oxide ink and I'm going to blend that down from the top of each edge because I'm going to be creating two grassy borders with this one piece of cardstock. So once everything was nice and blended, and I just used the same tool for both um, since I, they were both green, and then I'm going to press a little bit of those inks onto my work surface and water them down with a distress sprayer and pick that up with a paintbrush and do some splatter effect all over that panel. So I'll start with that bundled sage and then I'm going to pick up some of the mowed lawn as well and just kind of get some different size droplets and then I will set this panel aside to dry. And to clean that brush off, I'm just taking a fresh baby wipe and scrubbing that over the surface until all of that ink is removed. It was really quick and easy to do. Then I'm taking a new piece of Bristol Smooth Surface and I'm going to be using the smaller brush to blend on some tumbled glass Distress Oxide ink using the Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil. And it does take just a second to build up that color, just as if you were using a new blending foam. You don't really get much color right at first until you get some ink that's already built up on those bristles. Um, so I'm going to keep turning that cloud border and changing it so I get some different cloud formations and blending on that ink. And I have to say, I do really enjoy these brushes. The blend that you get is so soft and smooth. Um, so normally I do like the bold color that you get from using the regular blending foams, but I can definitely see how this has its place in your craft room as well. So. I definitely enjoyed these and will continue to use them. And if you're interested in picking some up for yourself, I will have links in the description bar below along with all of the other products that I used on today's video and you can check them out there. So I'm going to finish off this panel with a bit more of that splatter effect. I just love the texture that it gives. Once everything was dry, I trimmed down the cloud border with the Lawn Fawn Small Stitch Rectangle Stackables. I used the MFT Grassy Hills Dynamics for the grass borders and then Lawn Fawn Picket Fence Die for the white fence. I'm going to pop the grassy border with the straight edge into my Misty and stamp my sentiment using Versafine Onyx Black ink. And I like this ink for layering on top of Distress Oxides because it really sits on top and stays nice and bright. Then I'm going to pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using Lawn Fawn's Cilantro cardstock and Noble Fur ink. And I'm going to stamp the image of the dog that's kind of digging his way out of the dirt pile and the sentiment that says, you are possum. Now, because these were brand new, I didn't get a good impression. So I use my picket fence stamp scrubber to clean that off and then re-stamped. I got a much better impression, but I wanted to do one more just to make it nice and bold. 
And now I'm ready to assemble my card. I'm using the Simple Stories Summer Farmhouse Pattern Papers, and I've trimmed those down with the Lawn Fawn Large Stitch Rectangle Stackables. So this is going to fit over the entire card front. And I've got this beautiful floral print that I'm adding to the top. This is my favorite print in the whole pad. And then I'm going to use a red gingham down on the bottom edge. I'll set that aside and move on to my focal panel. So I'm starting with that cloud border and then I'm going to add the grassy border with the sentiment on it down to the bottom edge of the card. I'm keeping the glue nice and low so that I can tuck in my picket fence. So I'm just adding a bit of glue to the bottom edge and I was just about to adhere that when I realized that I had adhered the glue on the wrong side. So I just grabbed a baby wipe and wiped that off quickly. And the reason I knew it was the wrong side was because the uh, plates that I'm still using for my cuddle bug, I haven't switched over to the new machine yet. Um, they are so scratched up that the back side of my cardstock always looks really rough. In hindsight, I probably could have used it. It would have looked like some texture for the wood. Um, but I decided to flip it over. So then I slid my grassy border in there and just in the moment of panic, I wasn't being as careful as usual. So I ended up getting more glue on the top edge of my focal panel. Again, I'm going to wipe that off with a baby wipe after I get everything kind of lined up nice and straight here. So no harm done. Um, then I just took that panel and flipped it over and trimmed off any excess that was hanging off the sides. And now I can begin to adhere my images. So I'm going to start with the doghouse since that's the largest one and I'm going to adhere that over on the right hand side in front of that picket fence. And next I will take my dog since that's the main image there, but I wanted it to be a little bit overlapping that doghouse. So I'm going to adhere him just above that sentiment. And then I'm going to take the water that's spraying out of the hose because I want that to be going kind of right in his face. He's kind of chasing that hose and the water that's coming out. So I want all of these images here to be um, lined up right where I want them before that glue adheres and becomes permanent. So I just want to make sure everything is just where I want it while I still have that little bit of wiggle room with that liquid glue. I played with a couple of options of where to adhere this standing flower pot and finally decided that I wanted that up by the fence. So I'm going to adhere that right behind the hose. And there was a tiny piece of fence just hanging off the card there, so I just tore that off. And then I trimmed down a little bit of that hose because it was sticking over the edge a tiny bit. And then I'm going to take this knocked over pot and I'm going to adhere that down in front of the hose. And then I'll take the broken flower and I'm going to add that kind of spilling out of that pot as if that dog has just knocked it over as he's, you know, playing with that water and just kind of wreaking havoc while he's having fun and not even noticing the destruction that he's causing. <laughs> I added the dog bowl over in front of the dog house on the right hand side. And then I'm going to add the tennis ball right over kind of diagonal from that word hot. And then I thought it would be fun to add that frisbee up in the sky since there was kind of nothing going on up there. That will fill in some of that space and draw your eye upward. And then I grabbed those two little lines that are also included in the Hot Diggity Dog stamp set. And I use my Verse Fine Onyx Black ink to stamp those kind of coming out from it so it looks like it's still in motion. I added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel so I will peel off those release papers and then I'm going to line this up in the center of my card. Once I'm sure that's nice and straight I will press that down into place and that is going to complete my card for today. There's another peek at the inside. So I hope you guys enjoyed this super fun scene. I had so much fun playing with these products. And as I mentioned earlier, they will all be listed and linked in the description bar below if you'd like to check them out. 
If you're a dog lover or even just an animal lover, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. I post new videos every Monday and Friday. And if you can't wait that long, here are two extra videos I thought might also interest you. You can click on either one to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.